Hello, my name is Matt Max. This is the last episode of the Mental 90. Today we are going to put it all together. First, you have to attach your motors to those that access holders. You should do it in a way that the cable of the motor is as a back side. Because you see that in the gentry there is a hole. That's where the cables of the motor are supposed to go through. Like this. This way it's really neat. If you if you rotate your motor, it's well, it will still work, but it's just not as nice. So why not use use those holes the way they are supposed to be used? Now just screw those that motor holders in place. You just do that with two wood screws in our case. Don't forget the star washers because again, this right here is a part that vibrates a lot and every part that vibrates a lot that doesn't have a nylock nut on the other end needs star washers because otherwise the vibration is going to loosen up the screw over time. Next on are the Z couplers. You have four identical parts like this ones. Every part has two nut traps and every part has two smaller holes where the screws go through. They join like this. So you put the nylock nuts in the nut traps and then you just join the two parts put the screws in and then just join the two parts like this. You cannot go wrong. And screw it in place a little bit. Do not really tighten the screws, just screw it in so much that the screws catch the nut so that the screws don't fall out again. That's all. They still, both of those parts still have to be separated a little bit, otherwise you will not be able to actually get the uh, thread rod in there. Next, you're going to need some PVC tubing. What I'm using is this. This is isolation of a standard European power cable. That tends to be exactly the right size. You take this isolation of the PVC tubing and you push it on top of your axis of your Z motors. So you have a big hole and you have a small hole. The small hole is for the threaded rod. The big hole is for the Z axis or is for the motor of the uh, is for the axis of the Z motor. So you put it in like this with the big hole down. Now it just repeats the process for the other motor as well. Again you add s some PVC piping or insulation of a power cable on those axes so that the axis is a little bit uh, thicker and then you put the large hole of the Z coupler on the axis of your Z motor. This, those are the bar clamps for the Z-axis. They have a nut trap in the inside, just like the bar clamps for the Y-axis. And they have two holes in the side. Those holes are for the end stop. Those are going to be fastened at your gentry, like this. So the open side goes to the right for both bar clamps. Just like with our Y-axis, you don't fasten them all the way, you just loosely screw them into the place so that you can still move them around a little bit. So now we test these smooth rods and if they really fit, just gently push them in, make sure that you hold the bar clamp in place because otherwise you might break the wood because you have a lever here, right? Whenever you have a lever with MDF, you have to be really careful because MDF is not that stable when it comes to screws. It's easy for the screws to just break out. Okay, so now we have to make sure that this is actually in a right angle. So take a square and you measure from two directions to see whether it's actually square in both directions. Going to be a little bit difficult. 
And in my case, they are. So now you fix the bar clamp into place. You do not fix the smooth rod into place, just the bar clamp. And you repeat that for the other side. So again, you gently push it in. You make sure it's orthogonal to the base plate. That means it's right angles in all directions to the base plate. And when that is the case, you screw the bar clamp into place. You do not screw the smooth rod into place, just the bar clamp. It doesn't look straight from the video because uh, it's a wide angle. And uh, with wide angles, you have distortions. So. But it is exactly square. So now you remove the smooth rods again, because otherwise you cannot actually put the x-axis in. You don't have to remove them all the way, you just have to kind of pull them up so they're out of the way, like this. And this is where we put the x-axis in. So. The threaded rods go into the small holes of your couplings. Make sure that you push them all the way in. There is a little bridge inside the couplings and you have to push the threaded rods as far in as possible. And now you will really, really carefully, really, really carefully push the smooth rods through the linear bearings. If you are not careful here, you break your linear bearings and they are quite expensive. Also, this is the part where you adjust the distance between the X idler and the X motor bracket. That's why we didn't screw the buck clamps into place yet. If you really want to screw the buck clamps into place, the buck clamps on the idler and the motor bracket into place, you have to do it like this, then remove the X axis again and then screw all the screws in place. Okay, now you just push the smooth words all the way in. As a last test, you can just move the x-axis up and down a couple times. But now really make sure that the z-couplings are as far down as they go and that the threaded rods are as far in the z-couplings as possible. Because otherwise you are going to have z-axis creep and that's one of the main reasons why the Mandel 90 is using a standing z-axis in the first place. But once everything's in place, you just fix those screws. Now you just screw the bar clamps in so that the smooth words don't move anymore. And also you take your polyurethane sheet and your ribbon cable and you wrap it around the top of the gentry like this. You have to fix it in place with a couple strips of tape. So then you take your final bar clamp, those, that goes in those two holes up there on the gentry, that will hold everything in place, but you have to make sure that you have enough polyurethane sheet left and enough cable left that your x-axis can go all the way down and all the way up. So the place where the ribbon cable and the polyurethane sheet wrap around should be about the height of your print bed. Like you can see right here. That's the right height, and then you just screw everything into place with a couple of wood screws. And that's the majority of the 3D printer done. We still have some parts left. We need to do one more little thing. We need to fasten the belt. So you see the belt isn't really fastened at all, so obviously you cannot print like this. There is one more part. Uh, this part right here, it's this little uh, half moon. So here's what you do. You move the X carriage all the way to the left. And you really pull on the belt. Wrap it around your pulley. And it has to be nice and tangent. The smooth side has to be around the bearing and the T's have to go around your pulley. And then you just pull the belt in like this. And at this part. You see it has a little hole in it that goes right on this screw. 
This is a belt tensioning system that we will use to, well, tension the belt. So the belt wraps around this half moon piece and is then fastened by the part on top. So you wrap the, the belt around and then you screw this top screw in place. Again, there should be a nut wrap at the lower side. I didn't have the right screw. So I have to fasten it the old fashioned way. And finally, you use this screw that's to the right side of your X carriage and you just screw the screw in until the belt is nice and tensioned. The belt shouldn't be too tensioned, but it should be so tensioned that it's nice and straight and it's not good drooping at any place. And that's basically your mantle 90 done. All you need to do right now is to make sure all your bar clamps are nice and fixed. And then you can use those parts. Those are actually cable uh, to fix cables. You still have a couple of holes left. So you can use them to clamp your motor cables and your end slot cables and so on. So that it looks nice and tidy. But I'm not going to show you this because I'm pretty sure you will be able to add a couple wood screws. And that's basically your Mandel 90 done. All you need to do right now is to do all the electronics, which I'm not going to show you because it's basically the same as with every other RepRep 3D printer. My name is Matt Max. Thanks for watching this series. Until next time.